Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking about an over the top beautiful postcard perfect, little bit hot and sticky summer day here in the collapse of everything. Uh, I think we're heading up close to 90 degrees here on Sunday, September 2nd, 2023, and uh, I got to get through this uh, today's chronicle of the collapse before the next wave of vacation tourists comes through to celebrate the end of the summer of 2023 on the hottest weekend of the summer of 2023, Labor Day, uh, at least here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. So guys, it, 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 I just looked this up, it was August 20th, uh, the last time I came in here apologizing for, the, for overkill for uh, sharing a chronicle of the collapse from uh, probably, and, and I don't want to play favorites here, uh, there's so many to choose from over there at medium.com for uh, the doomers that I'm a fan of, but it is this fellow Indica, Indica, calls it up Indica, he's got some long 50 cent word name uh, that I can't pronounce. He's from Sri Lanka, but Indicom, I'm sorry, Indica, uh, this man, uh, you know, if Andy the gardener would get serious and, uh, and, and, and share his view of the world from Zombie Island, uh, he would probably sound a lot like Indica. Indica is uh, Andy the Gardener on steroids. That Indica not only uh, understands what is going on on this planet, but his ability to spell out what is going on on this planet and very entertaining, you know, just blackly, darkly uh, ironic humor about how doomed we are. Now, Indica is a big fan of the F word. He loves dropping F bombs all through his writing. So since this is a family channel, I try to change his F word uh, either to doomed or screwed, but uh, it, it's all the same. And uh, so it was August 20th when I when Indica came out with his uh, with his uh, rant uh, on Medium.com, which I think was titled, What Winning Against Climate Change Looks Like. Uh, anyway, I will put the link on that one, on, on uh, if you missed that one. And so this is kind of his follow-up part two. So after he explained to us a couple of weeks ago what winning against climate change looks like, today uh, he's flipping the coin and looking at what losing to climate change looks like. This is a long involved piece, guys. If the battery crashes, uh, I will put the link. You can read this yourself and, uh, and, and part one of this. And if you are not subscribed to Indica, you need to be. Anyway. Take it away, Indica. As discussed, you know, in, in part one of this rant from August 20th, as discussed, we have lost the fight against climate change before we started simply from the way we look at the problem. We are not the relevant species here. Uh, 
we are not the relevant species and fighting is not the right metaphor. All of our ideas of victory hinge on further domination of nature, which is why we are losing in the first place. Just ask the old gods or the new. Actual winning would require a level of sacrifice we consider disastrous in and of itself. We are a bunch of hairless apes ruled by corporations picking a fight with the effing weather. This is as stupid as it sounds. Regardless of the theoretical possibility of beating climate change, why are we always hitting? It is also, as discussed, you know, in part one, simply too late. The time to stop corporate colonialism was in the 1600s, the time to stop capitalism was in the early 1900s, and the time to address the growing symptoms of collapse was in the 1970s at best. As you may have noticed, we are multiple doubling cycles later, way too late. Exponential growth is a bitch, and it is a boss bitch. Now, the gods may move slowly, but when they do move, they move inexorably. We feel like we have control over climate collapse, but we don't. This change has been a long time coming, and we just happen to be here when it plays out. It's like being on the beach and seeing a tsunami coming in. It's a category error to stop it, and it's too late to run. What's happening is much bigger than us, and it is the big one. Given that we've already lost to climate change, the most important question is, what does losing look like? What do the limits to growth look like once you hit them? There's no better place to look than the book The Limits to Growth from 1972. Unfortunately, there is no worse time than now, nearly two doubling cycles later. What was a prediction then, in 1972, is an unsolvable predicament now. We were born in the age of screwing around, but we will die in the age of finding out. The Limits to Growth crew ran a computer model called World 3, which calculated how different forces, population, pollution, industrial growth would interact in the future, you know, meaning now. Unlike conventional economic models, which completely ignore the environment, these models accounted for things like finite resources and pollution and, spoiler alert, the environment will not be ignored. <clears throat> The limits to growth results <coughs> were roundly condemned and ignored by people at the time, and they seemed to be right. After the 1970s oil crisis, humans and corporations just dug up more fossil fuels and printed more money and made more VCRs. Francis Fukuyama declared the end of history, and everyone was supposed to develop along the same lines. It was actually the end of the world. The actual results are now in, and they are not good.
In 2008, Graham Turner published a comparison of the limits to growth with 30 years of reality, which he has a link to that essay. As Turner said, quote, the historical data compared favorably with the model output, close quote. For us people now living in the model, however, this is double plus ungood, as Turner wrote, what was this, 15 years ago, quote, as shown, the observed historical data for 1970 to 2000 most closely match the simulated results of the limits to growth standard run scenario for almost all the outputs reported. This scenario results in global collapse before the middle of this century, you know, around 2050. The comparison is well within uncertainty bounds of nearly all the data in terms of both magnitude and its trends over time. Given the complexity of numerous feedback sectors incorporated in the Limits to Growth World 3 model, it is instructive that the historical data compare so favorably with the model output, close quote. And uh, remember, all of this was written 15 years ago, and you better believe that the predictions of limit to growth with every passing year are becoming more and more spot on as we barrel towards the middle of the 21st century. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, Indy Cog gives all of these complicated graphs out of the book. I'm not much of a graph person, but if you're a graph person, you can, you can look at all of this. To return to the more complicated model, you can see the limits to growth predictions here and how they panned out. So he has it all graphed out. Uh, <clears throat> the green line, and, and these graphs you can read if you go on the link, we're mostly following is called the standard run because the standard for any exponential growth in a finite space is collapse. The standard is the standard run is broadly speaking screwing around and finding out. As Turner describes it, quote, <clears throat> the standard run, which is the one that we are solidly on and have been since the book was written, the standard run represents a business as usual situation where parameters reflecting physical, economic, and social relationships were maintained in the world free model at values consistent with the period from 1900 to 1970, i.e. no revolution. The limits to growth standard run scenario and nearly all other scenarios shows continued growth in the economic system throughout the 20th century and into the early decades of the 21st. However, the simulation suggests signs of increasing environmental pressure at the start of the 21st century, e.g. resources diminishing, pollution increasing exponentially, growth slowing in food services and material wealth per capita. And uh, Indica adds, i.e. now. The simulation of this scenario, this is still Turner, talking from a, from 15 years ago, 
the simulation of this scenario, meaning the one we've never left, results in overshoot and collapse of the global system about midway through the 21st century due to a combination of diminishing resources and increasing ecological damage due to pollution. Close quote. Back to uh, Indica. One important point in the limits to growth is that almost all of the models end here. The default is collapse and the burden of proof is really on anyone saying we can avoid it. The standard run is surprisingly accurate but it's not really about any particular model. The default scenario for any infinite growth in a finite space is collapse and you don't need a complicated model for that. It's napkin level math. If you want to run your own basic model, get a chessboard and place one grain of rice on the first square, then double the amount every square. You'll see soon enough. Within the limits to growth models, the scenarios we have not looked at, the red and blue lines respectively, are comprehensive technology, which means using technology to solve our problem doesn't work, and the stabilized world, which is global climate communism, did not happen. These scenarios are effectively moot points now, way too late, but let's discuss them anyway for academic reasons, otherwise known as shits and grins. All right. Technological solutions are fundamentally more problem, resource use, and pollution and at best buy you a little bit more time. Global climate communism would mean stopping economic growth, controlling population, and distributing resources according to a rigid plan, i.e. what Westerners call authoritarianism. This is obviously a non-starter, and anyway, the time to start was 50 years ago. What people chose in the 1970s, 80s, and honestly, up till today, is effectively no action, which is the equivalent of taking strong action. As the limits to growth authors said back in 1972, quote, Taking no action to solve these problems is equivalent to taking strong action. Every day of continued exponential growth brings the world system closer to the ultimate limits to that growth. A decision to do nothing is a decision to increase the risk of collapse. Because of the delays in the system, if the global society waits until those constraints are unmistakably apparent, it will have waited too long. Close quote. Back to Indica. And this is precisely where we are. Over eight thousand days later. We have been growing every single day and we have long since passed the ultimate limits to growth. We are feeling the time delayed environmental responses to our bullshit 
and our only response is bullshit pledges for 2050, i.e. a full doubling cycle later. We have offered way too little, way too late. The gods are pissed, and they are not screwing around. This is the age of finding out. <clears throat> when the Limits to Growth was published in 1972, it was honestly too late. Their winning scenario required global communism that decade, and we got the opposite of that. Capitalism won a Pyrrhic victory, and now the world is in flames. Now we are nearly two doubling cycles later, and the problem is four times as bad. So it is way, 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 way too late. We are well past the age of screwing around and well into the era of finding out. Just look at what happens right about now in the standard run. It all just runs away. And then he has some more graphs from the book. What does this mean for you? Well, as a person, you're going to see massive population decline in your lifetime. We know this is happening in a gentle way in rich countries as people have fewer kids, but this won't be like that. As you can see, the birth rate you know, in, in this chart, which you can see if you go on here, as you can see, the birth rate actually goes up. It's more the death rate spiking and killing people, many of them undoubtedly children. How does that happen? Look at the collapse in food per capita. Right now, every calorie we eat actually contains up to 10 calories worth of fossil fuel energy. This is an energy return on an energy invested an EROIE of 0.121, a wild historic anomaly because we got a one-time inheritance of fossil fuels. As Dr. Tom says in his physics textbook on the subject, quote, in a sense, we are eating our fossil fuels. It also points to an EROEI of 0.1 to 1, which is well below break-even. Obviously, in times prior to fossil fuels, when we used human and animal labor in our agricultural pursuits, an EROEI less than 1 to 1 would spell starvation, more energy going in than was recouped from the land." Close quote. Back to Indica. <clears throat> we still don't know how to reliably make fertilizers or do industrial agriculture with renewables, but even if we did, their EROIEs are far worse than fossil fuels. And that is before we get into the pollution destroying arable land. We're damned if we do, and damned if we don't. Less energy, less resources, and more pollution means one thing. More death. Starvation is just one of the ways to go. As Cuddy Ranks said, six million ways to die, choose one. If you look at the graph, you can see natural resources bottoming out as pollution peaks. This is very interesting when you consider our net zero by 2050 pledges. These pledges are 
big business approved because they know that fossil fuel reserves become unprofitable by then. In reality, these pledges are an abnegation of any responsibility now and a guarantee of nature dismantling everything quite violently in the future. As the author said, quote, a decision to do nothing is a decision to increase the risk of collapse. And they said this 50 years ago. A pledge to do something in 30 years is, as mentioned, a guarantee. One thing to remember is that limits to growth does not have our myopic focus on CO2. Today, we say that if we just stop or capture those emissions, you know, those CO2 emissions, we can continue all our other bullshit. When the limits to growth authors say pollution, however, they mean pollution in general. Renewables, renewables also generate and ultimately are pollution. Re using renewable energy for the same consumer society still digs up the earth and puts out garbage. There is a fundamental conflict between any type of high industrial output, natural resources, and pollution. It simply crashes however you run the program. CO2 is not some magic cheat code. We are just cheating the future so we can buy dumb shit a bit longer and feel good about it. One guarantee that will be broken is that all the debt this levered up society is floating on, debt is all borrowed against a more rich future. It's all borrowed against the idea that there will be more young population, more resources, exponentially more in fact. This is all false. Hence, you get the mother of all crashes and the whole planetary Ponzi scheme we call the economy comes down. Our present was all stolen from the past through fossil fuels and borrowed against the future, but debts that cannot be paid will not be paid. The 500-year Ponzi scheme we have called economic growth will all come down, shattering both illusions and reality as it falls. There's nobody here, is there, brother? What's that? There's nobody here, is there? No. All right, so I can keep... Man, you scared the shit out of me. I thought you were a client walking up on this. All right. I think uh, I did not realize this, this essay went on for 700 pages. The window we're talking about is that back one over the bed that's locked. We are on the standard run, and this leads to a dramatic decline in living standards for our descendants, our descendants, they will literally descend the business end of the grass of the graph and curse us for it. When we completely bottom out, we will reach a kind of involuntary steady state with vastly diminished resources, industrial capacity, and human population resources that could have been used to cushion this collapse will have been forever blown putting precious lithium into dildos 
flying footballers around in private jets and a sordid dumb shit that will be remembered only in stories that sound more and more mythical. This is what the new era will look like. If you want a sneak preview of how it feels, just look at my country, Sri Lanka, last summer. And I'm not going to get into all of this. He, uh, he goes in and, and, and talks about how Sri Lanka collapsed here recently and, and, and how they're, they're pretending like they climbed out of it which is uh, far the, from the truth. So I'm not going to, you can read, you can read about the collapse in Sri Lanka. I have had a preview of what losing would look like, and I don't wish it on anybody. And yet, it is coming for everybody. I don't know what else to say besides, I'm sorry, this is what losing looks like. It is a loss. You can read the charts or see my people's hungry eyes. You can physically see the next generation of Sri Lankans being lost, and no island is an island, climatically speaking. That fate is coming to all our descendants globally. It's just a timing difference. Billy Joel sang, we didn't, we didn't start the fire, but we tried to fight it. But we really didn't. We just lived what we thought were standard lives, crashing into the inevitable end of the standard run, as it will read, on our tombstone, they were born in the age of fucking around. They died in the age of finding out. <laughs> Amen, Brother Indica. And uh, I will see if I can go a month without another Indica essay. But anyway, I got to get back and we have a stuck window where some clueless moron was not satisfied with closing a screened window. They had to lock it. And now we can't open the goddamn window. Anyway, it looks like that, uh, it looks like the narrow window of opportunity is, is it safe to say the window of opportunity is locked shut? No. You're going to open that window of opportunity? need the toll from down below. All right. Our eternal optimist realize, realize, realize says the window of opportunity it only appears to be slammed <laughs> shut, but we, he has a tool. He has a tool to down reopen. Down the flatlands, I must traverse. All right. <laughs> We're going to get a tool to reopen the slam shut window of opportunity, which I hope is not going to be a sledgehammer to break the glass. I gotta get to work. I got tourists coming in. Bye guys. The battery probably crashed ten minutes ago anyway. You know, you Unbelievable.